what is math exactly? It's a uh, a nice simplification, a, a, a simple description of what? So we have a computer scientist, a physicist, and a chemist here. <laughs> Walk into a bar. I think the chemist is going to define math, and you guys can correct me. Go for it. I would say... Let, 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 lay it on us, Lee. I, <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> I think the ability to um, to label objects and uh, and place them into classes and then do operations on the objects is what math is. So on that point, what does it mean to be object first versus information first? So what what's the difference between object and information when you get to that low fundamental level? Well, I might change my view. So I'm stuff first, the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when stuff becomes objects, it has to invent information. And then the information acts on more stuff and becomes more objects. So I think there is a transition to information that occurs when you go from stuff to objects. Wait, wait. Time, though, like yeah. yeah, information yeah. is em emergent? Then? Not emergent. Information is actionable memories from the universe. So when, when memories become actionable, that's information. But there's always memory, but it's not actionable. Yeah, and then it's not information. Great. And actionable is what you can create. You can use it. If you can't use it, then it's not information. If you can't transmit it, if you if it doesn't have any causal consequence. Falls in the forest. I don't understand. Why is that not information? <laughs> it's not information. It's it's um it's uh stuff. It's stuff happening, but it's not it's not causal. Yeah, it, yeah, we can this is it's cool. happening. No, no, the but happening yeah, but, but requires that's... information. No, can't, no, can't no, no, stuff, no. Stuff is always happening. No, <laughs> this is where the physicists get and the mathematicians get themselves in a loop because they think the universe. I mean, I think uh, say Max Tegmark and and is very playful and say like the universe, universe is just math. Well, if the universe is just math. Then we might as well not bother having any conversation because the conversation already written. We just might as well go to the future and say, can you just give us the conversation? It's happened already. So I think the problem is that mathematicians are so successful at labeling stuff and so successful understanding the stuff through those labels, they forget that actually the, those labels had to emerge and that information had to be built on those memories. So memory in the universe, so constraints, graph, when they become actionable and the graph can loop back on itself or interact with other graphs and they can intersect, those memories become actionable and therefore their information. And I think you just changed my, son, my, my mind on something pretty big, but I don't have a pen, so I can't write, I'm gonna write it down later, but roughly the idea is, is like you've got these, these two graphs of objects, of stuff, that you have memories, and then when they intersect, and then they can act on each other, mm -hmm. that's maybe the mechanism by which information is then, so then it, you can then abstract. So when one, when one graph can then build another graph and say, hey, you don't have to go through all the nonsense we had to go through, here's literally the way to do it. Stuff always comes first, but then when stuff builds the abstraction, the abstractions can be then teleported onto other stuff. abstractions is the looping back yeah. power. Okay. Am I making, I don't know, I got stuck. Yeah, so <laughs> first, a god made stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. And after that, when you start to be able to uh, form abstractions, that's when God is the emerged. memory we the universe can remember. God is the memory the universe can yeah. remember. Otherwise, there's no wait. Did you deciphering that statement hundreds of years from now? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? What do the humans well, mean by this? Hey, look, don't don't diss my my one liners. I no, I, no, I, I wasn't dissing me, it. It, was it just, took me it sounded 15 very fifteen seconds to come up. With I don't that. I don't know what it means. What does it mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. We we need to. Well, how do we get onto this? We were uh, time, causality, mathematics. So what is mathematics in this uh, picture of stuff, objects, memory, and um, information? Is what, what exactly is mathematics? It's the most efficient labeling scheme that you can apply to lots of different graphs. Well, the labeling scheme, it doesn't make it sound useful. Can I try? Yep, sure, please. So, <laughs> Have you rejected my definition of mathematics? I'm yes. shocked. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, uh, uh, but it's correct. <laughs> Go on, sorry. Excellent. Um, no, I mean, I think um, I think we have a problem, right? Because we, we can't not be us. Like, we're stuck in the shells we are, and we're trying to observe the world. And so mathematics looks like it has certain properties. And I guess the thought experiment I find is useful is to try to imagine if you were outside of us looking at us as physical systems using mathematics, what would be the specific features you associate 
to the property of understanding mathematics and being able to implement it in the universe, right? And um, and when you do that, mathematics seems to have some really interesting properties relative to other kinds of abstraction we might talk about, like language or artistic expression. Uh, one of those properties is the one I mentioned already that is really easy to copy between physical media. So mm. if I give you a mathematical statement, you almost immediately know what I mean. If I tell you the sky is blue, you might say, is it cobalt blue? Is it azure blue? What color blue do you mean? And you have a harder time visualizing what I actually mean. So mathematics carries a lot of meaning with it when it's copied between physical systems. It's also the reason we use it to communicate with computers. Um, and then the second one is it retains its property of actually what it can do in the universe when it's copied. So the example I like to give there is, is think about like Newton's law of gravitation. Um, it's actually, it's a, it's a compressed regularity of a bunch of uh, phenomena that we observe in the universe, but then it allow that information actually is a causal in a sense that it allows us to do things we wouldn't be able to do without that particular knowledge and that particular abstraction. And in this case, like launch satellites to space or send people to Mars or whatever it is. Um, so, so if you look at us from the outside and you say, what is it for physical systems to invent a thing called mathematics and then to use, uh, and, and then, and then it to become a physical observable mathematics is kind of like the universally copyable information that allows, uh, new possibility spaces to be opened in the future because it allows this kind of ability to map one physical system to another and actually understand the the general principles. Yeah, so is it helping the uh, overlap of causal graphs then yes. by mapping? By oh, I, well, I think that's the explanation for what it is in terms of the physical theory of assembly would be some feature of the structure of the assembly spaces of causal graphs and their relationship to each other. So for example, and I mean, this is things that we're going to have to work out over the next few years. I mean, we're in totally uncharted conceptual territory here. Um, but <laughs> as is usual, uh, diving off the deep end. Um, but I would expect that we would be able to come up with a theory of like, why is it that some physical systems can communicate with each other? Um, like language. Language is basically because we're objects extended over time and some of the history of that assembly space actually overlaps. And when we communicate, it's because we actually have shared structure in our causal history. So let me have another quick go at this, right? So I think we all agree. So I think um, we take mathematics for granted because we've gone through this chain, right? Of, you know, um, we all we all share a language now, okay? And we can, well, we share language. So we have languages that we can, we can make interoperable. And and so whether you're speaking, I don't know, all the different dialects of Chinese, all the different dialects of English, French, German, whatever, you can interconvert them. The interesting thing about mathematics now is that everybody on planet Earth, every human being and computers um, share that common language. Yeah. That language was constructed by a process in time. So what I'm trying to say is that assembly invented math is those, those pro right from the, you know, mathematics didn't occur, it didn't exist before life abstraction was invented by life right that doesn't mean that the universe wasn't capable of mathematical things 